Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Uh, they're pretty happy with the reviews of the iPhone. Uh, of course, I don't think anybody's going to come out and say the new iPhone sucks. As some people would, but you just can't trust those people because the iPhone has improved incrementally over time. Uh, and I think that's the, the goal that Apple has uh, in relation to the iPhone usage, you know, just, you know, stacking incremental changes, you know, making it better and better over time. And I think we're going to hear the same uh, type of announcements in relation to the iPads as well, iPad mini and the regular iPad. 64% are now running iOS 7, the fastest software upgrade in history. That's, that's a, I think people upgraded if only because it was so radically different and they wanted a new experience on their older phone, even if it wasn't all that old. Uh, so they're diving into iTunes radio at this point in time. Uh, I've used iTunes radio and it's okay, but honestly being a Pandora and Spotify user, I find them better. Uh, you know, I, I guess I pay for Pandora one, so I don't have to deal with commercials all that much. I don't have iTunes match. So when I play iTunes radio, uh, I get a lot more ads than I, I really want to hear in a, a radio stream or uh, that's what I've been accustomed to. One billion songs played. Whoa, no. 20 million listeners, a billion songs in the U S over the last month. It's one hell of a radio station. Boy, oh boy. Everybody seeing me loud and clear now? I don't know what happened a few minutes ago. Uh, I, I, I looked at the uh, thing that I broadcast through and it was blank. Weird. 60 billion cumulative downloads. Uh, really? A million apps available in the App Store? That is pretty large. Of course, 90 percent of the apps in the app store uh, let me go a little further than that 95 percent of the apps in any app store uh, are apps you'd never want to use uh buy or even use for free uh you couldn't even pay me to use half the apps that are in any app store so uh that number is impressive but you know when you take it in uh, uh I, I guess in totality in relation to an app store in general how many apps do you need how many apps do you use a million's impressive, but you can't have a million installed on here. Not at the same time, at least. So, uh, now they're going going on to the Mac. This is where I would expect to, see, uh, to hear about the uh, software update Mavericks. Running fine. It's not without its share of bugs uh, or issues. One of the issues I've had with Mavericks, running the Goldmaster or GM uh, Gold build, uh, the ones that, that's going to be shipping... Uh, I've had an issue with uh, the mail app. The animations are back, and I can't turn them off. I've I've looked for every tweaking tool, and none of them work with Mavericks. Uh, and even if they do, the tweak doesn't work. So I'm looking for a way to disable the mail animation in Mavericks specifically. People keep sending me the old tweaks. I'm like, they don't work. They don't work. They don't work. They don't work. I, it's got to be a new tweak because the old ones don't work, which is sad, and I hate the mail animations. That's my biggest complaint with Mavericks so far. Oh, yeah, Google IMAP also doesn't work in mail. I use mail app. Don't worry, you're not missing anything from Apple. They're not announcing anything right now. They're just talking about how great the Mac is. I mean, of course they think the Mac is great. Uh, oh, interesting. Tim Cook, quote, Our competition's different. They're confused. They changed after netbooks. Now they're trying to make PCs into tablets and tablets into PCs. Ooh, that's like a, a slap in the face of uh, to Microsoft, really. Uh, who knows what they'll do next, uh, he, he also said, and he said, uh, Tim also said he can't answer that question, but he says they are focused. Apple is focused, and that's good. Craig Federighi is now about to hit the stage. Huzzah! Craig is one of my favorite guys to have on stage from Apple. I love this guy on stage. Uh, he, he could run the show, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so here we go with OS X, uh, Mavericks. I'm expecting Mavericks, and this is just a, a guess here, not having any information uh, from the stream yet. I would expect to see Mavericks ship within a week because it's it's ready to go. Uh, likely available for 20 bucks uh, through the App Store. I, I don't expect it to be anything less than that if history is any indicator. Uh, Craig noted uh, that their focus with Mavericks was to focus on technologies, features, and apps. Uh, 
the biggest mission to fundamentally upgrade your hardware, specifically in relation to software. So I, I think, you know, that's a... Uh, that's good for Apple, uh, especially if you happen to be someone who's a mobile user with Apple's hardware. And I don't mean iOS devices. I mean Mac uh, devices or uh, Mac PCs, Macs, uh, running OS X, of course. Uh, it seems like a lot of optimizations were made specifically for uh, battery and power efficiency uh, with Mavericks. <clears throat> uh, and I would say that if you have, um, let's see here, Snow Leopard, or I'm sorry, Mountain Lion. Boy, that's a few... Uh, editions old. Uh, if you have Mountain Lion running on your Mac right now, you should be fine with Mavericks. I don't think your system will get slower. I can tell you that m in using Mavericks, Google Chrome does not perform as well on Mavericks as it did on Mountain Lion. So I think Google may need to update its code if they're even looking at performance, but Google Chrome has never really been focused on de desktop performance all that much. Google's not really very well known for that type of uh, tweak. Uh, and that's just uh, empirical uh, from the, the data that I've gathered, from the information that I've seen. Yes, it may be fast in terms of executing JavaScript and whatnot, but uh, it doesn't run all that well on any platform, seemingly. Yet, they got to work on that. Desktop performance and even mobile performance on Android included. <clears throat> so a new feature they're introducing is called compressed memory. So memory management gets even better. Uh, instantly compressing inactive parts of memory uh, fitting uh, six gigs of data and four gigs of RAM so that you don't have to swap out to uh, virtual memory. Uh, it's all about speed. In terms of graphic systems, uh, they support OpenGL4, OpenCL on IG, or integrated graphics, which is rather nice. Uh, oh, video memory, very nice uh, uh, usage model, and not needing as much uh, video memory to get the same amount of performance, which is fantastic. Uh, so it's been optimized, OpenCL specifically for integrated graphics. Again, a lot of that is valuable for those of you who are running on a, a mobile Mac, uh, a MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, or just a plain old MacBook. Um, and I think that's, uh, you know, really the, the way the, the, the industry is probably going to go, at least in, as far as Apple's concerned. That being said, I expect to hear something about the Mac Pro today as well. <clears throat> Uh, you know, it, it's it's interesting. I, I'm glad that they've put the amount of attention and detail into performance on the Mac since that has kind of been ignored for a while. But in using, I, I can tell you this, I've got a Retina MacBook Pro, uh, one of the first Retina MacBook Pros available, and it was definitely more responsive generally than it was on, on Mountain Lion. So, you know, if you've got a modern or a newer Mac, uh, a newer Mac equipment, Mavericks should run better than it would on older Mac equipment moving from Mountain Lion to Mavericks. Again, just my experience, I found uh, that the the uh, my newer Retina Display MacBook Pro, uh, about a year old or so, uh, it, it's about as fast, if not faster, than my Mac Pro, uh, and that just finally happened. The Mac Pro has been fantastic for the past year or so. Uh, I'm sorry, the past five years, uh, I got that Mac Pro. I would hope to get the new Mac Pro, but I would probably need to find a sponsor for that because those things are not probably going to be cheap because they're for power users like me, potentially you. Uh, so there's a new Maps app on Mavericks, uh, the iBooks app, which is probably a bigger deal if you're into books, reading books, uh, or if you're a student. Um, you know, in using the Maps app on Mavericks, again, the, the Gold Master, uh, I've found that uh, it... It works well uh, for, for what it is. I don't know if it's necessarily going to replace Google Maps. Uh, and, and granted, I, I do use iOS devices on the go, uh, and I do also have, sorry, let me reach over here and grab one of my Android devices. Let's see, is this one charged right now? The Note 3. Yeah, it was just charged yesterday. There we go. I guess my, sorry, I, I showed a, an Android device, a Samsung device, in the middle of an Apple event. Sorry got awkward, didn't it? Craig is demonstrating uh, some features in Mavericks, uh, showing off the speed, uh, showing off uh, how things will work, uh, specifically uh, the integration between products on the desktop. Uh, a couple of other features of note in Mavericks, tabbed browsing within not just Safari, uh, your web browser, but also the Finder or your, your local uh, file system navigator 
if you're not familiar with what a finder is, although I expect that if you're watching this video, you do know. Another thing they added is tagging, uh, which may be a bigger deal if you still deal with files. I don't as much anymore, uh, honestly. I I've tried to move most of my files and file management to the cloud, uh, and that's just uh, been easier for me to move between uh, computers and systems and phones and uh, platforms, really. Uh, so I tend not to, uh, you know, pigeonhole myself into one platform or another. I mean, life's too short to just use one thing, to just want one thing, you know? I mean, there's so much value out there. So uh, I would say that uh, Mavericks, generally speaking, a series of incremental improvements that in aggregate make it a better platform or a better OS than Mountain Lion Outright, uh, but again, should likely work better, or my experience works better with newer hardware, it, the differences between uh, the newer hardware and the older hardware, obviously. So if you have older hardware, don't expect performance increases by leaps and bounds, maybe smaller increases in performance. But uh, again, I'm, the, the oldest computer I have is that Mac Pro that I've been, it's my daily workhorse. I mean, it is an amazing machine uh, and it's worked so well for all these years. Let me go ahead and make sure the live stream is still kicking. It is, I think. They're talking about the updates to the notification center where you can reply to uh, people right in line uh, with the notification, uh, which is nice to see on the desktop. Why haven't they integrated that within iOS? I don't know, maybe that's coming down the pike uh, with a revision of iOS 7 or potentially 8. Uh, I don't use the uh, notification center as much as other people do. It tends to get in my way, um, but I'm an edge user, right? Uh, that's just been my experience with it. If you're excited about that, awesome, a nice incremental feature, certainly something that would uh, cause you to think uh, about using OS 10 over any other desktop platform. And I'll put laptop into that, uh, that category as well, or traditional computer platform, really. Uh, another thing you can do with Notification Center now is getting notifications on websites or website updates, which is kind of nice as well. <clears throat> Apple website says available shortly. Thank you very much, uh, Yusuf Nori, for providing that update. Uh, it's quite nice. Uh, and I'm reading your comments too. Uh, hi, Chris. I'm Sakar. This is my first live video ever. Awesome. Although mine isn't as exciting as the official Apple stream, I'm doing my best to relate to you uh, my, my thoughts as they're going through um, features. Uh, and again, I'm talking over <laughs> I'm talking over Craig right now. So he's saying one thing and I'm trying to say another. Just do me a favor before the day's over, try that yourself. You see how easy it is and then you'll you'll start to understand exactly what I'm going through right now. It's crazy. I've got this voice in my head and I'm not listening. Uh, St Safe Pet Haven asks, have you converted to all paperless for your home and home office? How'd you go about it? Any regrets? I, I kind of have. I scan things in and then put it wherever it needs to go. Um, I have a, a folder where I keep most scanned documents. I call it you know, like faxes. Um, even though I don't actually fax all the documents there. Uh, I use Google Docs to organize a lot of document data, uh, if only because it's been ubiquitous and I value ubiquity and Google is it's 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 a platform that you can get to from any other platform. Really? I mean, Google itself. I'm not talking about Android as a platform. I mean, Google as a platform. So Google Docs has been the best way that I found to this point to organize documents that I don't track uh, really as regularly as I probably should. Uh, they're talking about uh, data detectors within mail, uh, which is really nice. So if you're reading a mail message, uh, and uh, see if I can pull up a, a message on iOS, because I, I had one earlier today that had it. Basically, if someone types in blah, 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 tomorrow at noon, it'll highlight tomorrow at noon. You click that and it'll add it to your calendar or allow you to add that appointment to the calendar directly from the data detector, which is very, very convenient. In terms of performance of the Maps app on Mavericks, it was fine. Uh, it took me a, a while to get used to the different uh, gestures on Maps on the, the desktop. Uh, it's really the equivalent to Maps on the desktop for OS X, uh, specifically Mavericks. The equivalent is Google Earth. It's close. Uh, other than 
using Apple's map data versus Google's map data. That's just, uh, I mean, that might go without saying. The value of having maps on the desktop, by the way, for uh, OS X or Mavericks users is that you can synchronize or more easily uh, get information from your desktop, traditional desktop or laptop running OS X Mavericks or above uh, to your iOS device, your iPhone, iPad, or, or what have you. So, uh, it really is going to be worth the money. If, if it, even if it was 30 and I don't, they haven't announced the price yet. Uh, even if it was 30, it'd still be worth the money to upgrade. If only for those uh, updates, you're not going to, I don't believe you're going to miss anything. I don't believe that you're going to experience things that won't be addressed uh, at any point in the future. Assuming they squish bugs and I'd assume they will. But then again, sometimes they fix things. I saw a little bit of sloppiness in Mavericks that I, I, I know why they changed things, but they kind of made things sloppy at the same time. Uh, I, I just wish they would not change things for the worse. And Apple seems to sometimes do that. Oh, every company, I guess, does. But um, Apple's just not looking at the details like I was hoping that they would be doing. Yeah. All right, so uh, moving on. Sorry, now that... Whoa! Did I hear this right? Mavericks is going to be free? Whoa. Whoa. Mavericks is free. So that is another slap in the face. Or, or an, a, another slap in Microsoft's face. It is true. Yes. Verified. Mavericks is free. Mavericks is free. So worth the price of upgrading. Wow. Uh, now compare that to the price of a Windows 8 upgrade. I don't think there's a comparison, really. Yikes. Okay, the differences are getting more stark in terms of a contrast. That's pretty amazing. I don't think anybody can argue. Who's going to complain about that? Who's the Yahoo complaining about that? How dare they update something for free? <laughs> oh, man. That's crazy. That's crazy. A uh, single step update you can get from Snow Leopard to Mavericks. That's pretty nice. They're supporting all the way back to 2007. And my Mac Pro was, yeah, I guess it was about 2008. Wow, dude. That's that's pretty nice. And I, I would say performance isn't necessarily worse across the board on the Mac Pro. I mean, it's a fast computer to, uh, in general. Oh, and it's available today. So everybody have fun with Mavericks. Let me know if you know how to uh, disable the mail animation within Mavericks specifically and you've tested it because uh, I haven't seen it yet. Both mail animations, not just the reply, but also the send. The in the I hate them. Hate those animations. Um, wow. That's crazy. Good luck, Microsoft, says Kratith. Indeed. Uh, Phil Schiller's on stage to talk about the MacBook. Maybe we'll hear some updates in relation to Haswell. Go Intel! Uh, now they're uh, talking about the new MacBook Air, which is fantastic. Uh, Air is a great portable computer. E everything about the Air, uh, really, for what it is and how powerful it is. Not as powerful as I might need it because I use my Retina Display MacBook Pro as a video crunching machine. It is all about video, which is one of the reasons why I would want to go to a Mac Pro, if only for performance. Today, we're turning our attention to the MacBook Pro since the MacBook Air has recently been updated. Here we go, MacBook Pro update. And again, the Retina Display performance got better with Mavericks. FYI, if you had a Retina Display MacBook Pro and we're, we're complaining about perf, like display perf, like kind of lagging drop frames, that improved dramatically in the Retina Display MacBook, MacBook Pro with Mavericks. And hey, it's a free update. Hello. Uh, <laughs> insane, this is, this is crazy. I can't believe that, free. Free Mavericks, free Mavericks, free. They should have, uh, someone should Photoshop that, like a whole bunch of protesters. Free Mavericks, free Mavericks, free. And then and then uh, Tim Cook going, okay, fine, it's free. Or I guess, uh, you know, Craig would be on stage saying that. Uh, looks like the MacBook Pro is getting hardware updates. A pretty good series. Uh, 13 inches thinner and lighter, 3.46 pounds, 0.71 inches thin, uh, I'd assume they're eliminating the uh, magnetic drives and, and certainly the optical drives uh, across the board. Um, I don't think that's going to be a, a shock. Haswell chipset, of course, we'd expected that. The fourth generation core from Intel. 
uh, Iris graphics up to 90% faster, nine hours of battery life in a MacBook Pro. Slightly faster or more perf uh, focused compared to the MacBook Air. They're expecting or suggesting you can get nine hours of iTunes video playback from the MacBook Pro. The MacBook Pro, by the way, will not be free. Uh, not to disappoint anybody. H hang on just a second. Honey? Baby? Oh, man. All of a sudden, I got very thirsty, and I can't abandon the live stream. I may have to text my wife. She may be showering here. Uh, up to three times faster uh, than other or previous gen MacBook uh, Air or Pros, uh, and now supports 802.11c. Fantastic. Let me hang on. Let me text Diana. Um, can you get me some water, please? I said please, and can you? Uh, oh, uh, the new MacBook Pro also has uh, Thunderbolt 2. Although, when are they going to update the Thunderbolt uh, monitors to Thunderbolt 2? Because they're still uh, the first Thunderbolt and USB 2. Uh, the 13-inch, this new MacBook Pro, starting at $1299, that's a $200 drop from before. Uh, so for $1299, if that's what I said there, hopefully I did, because uh, I'm hearing a lot of numbers in my head right now. 13-inch, Reddit display. 2.4 gigahertz dual core i5, 4 gigs of RAM, iris graphics, 128 gig SSD, great value, uh, really for what it is. I mean, a fantastic machine. And it's running OS 10. And you can run Windows on a Mac. And it still runs Parallels, which means you can run Windows in, uh, well, in win Windows uh, in, in Linux and OS 10 side by side by side with Parallels. You can't necessarily do that all out of the box with a Mac. Moving along to the 15-inch, uh, uh, see here. Oh, by the way, that MacBook Pro, new MacBook Pro 13-inch is shipping today. Again, not free. So it looks like they're going with the 4th Gen uh, Crystal Well chip from Intel using uh, NVIDIA's GeForce GT750M, uh, and that's the Crystal Well chip uh, also using the Iris Pro graphics. Uh, up to eight hours of battery life on that 15 inch. Not bad. Not horrible. So it's uh, about an hour more of battery life than the previous gen. Uh, like the one that I'm using. I'm using a 15 inch uh, Retina Display MacBook Pro. Yeah, it'd be nice to upgrade the MacBook Pro, but I probably won't do that for another uh, three years or so. <clears throat> the 15 inch starting at 1999. I mean, it's going to be there for you. Uh, uh, you know, uh, for, for it's all about performance, really, uh, with uh, the MacBook Pro 15-inch. Uh, the previous gen started at $21.99. Now it's uh, starting at $19.99. Rented display, 2 gig quad-core i7, core i7 processor, 8 gigs of RAM, uh, Iris Pro graphics, and 256 SSD. <clears throat> That's where it begins. Also shipping today as well. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, you can get up to a terabyte of flash storage, of course, is configured. That's going to run you a bit more than 1999. Uh, all right, let's see here. Anything else? <clears throat> yeah, so they've got an array of products uh, ready for you to buy today. Hardware, if you were waiting on a, an update of the MacBook Pro line, of course, the current gen MacBook Pros or previous gen now, uh, have been fantastic with Mavericks. I gotta say, it did feel like a pretty good upgrade going from uh, Mountain Lion to Mavericks on my now previous gen MacBook Pro, 15 inch. So next up, Mac Pro, we've uh, seen this already. Uh, uh, earlier this year, they kind of showed a preview. This is when Schiller famously said, can't innovate my ass. Now, that's not to say that they innovated Phil Schiller's ass. I, I, maybe they did. Maybe that's a part of the announcements this morning. I don't know. You know, the design is different, but to me, it's not so much about the design of the Mac Pro so much as it is about the performance, and I'd expect to see stellar performance from the Mac Pro. So when is that Mac Pro shipping? That's my first question. Second question is, how much is it going to cost? Third question is, how can I find a sponsor for it? I need to upgrade. I, it's been five years since I've upgraded my primary computing experience. That's a long time to wait. 
But, it, you know, then what am I going to do with my old Mac Pro? Well, let me worry about finding a sponsor first if I can find somebody. Because this thing ain't going to be cheap. And I guarantee unboxing that and using and demonstrating it is... People are going to want to see that because not everybody's going to be getting a Mac Pro. Uh, running on the next generation Xeon uh, E5 Quad 6, 8, or 12 core, up to 30 meg L3 cache, 40 lanes of PCI Express Gen 3. Fantastic. Uh, you know, I don't expect, and I, I, I didn't really upgrade any internals other than after purchasing it, going to SSD, installing more RAM, uh, and also upgrading my video card, which had a really diminishing returns. I was disappointed in upgrading uh, my video card, uh, which is kind of unfortunate. So, um, you know, let's see here. Ah, fastest ECC memory. Uh, 1866 MHz DDR3 ECC. Four-channel controller. This is for you spec geeks. Up to 60 gigabytes in bandwidth. 64 gigs for memory. Uh, user accessible. It's important for upgradability. Dual workstation. GPU. Standard. AMD Fire Pro graphics. Go AMD. Up to 4,096 stream processors. Dual 384-bit memory buses. Up to 12 gigabytes of GDDR5 VRAM. Uh, 528 gigs total bandwidth, up to 7 teraflops. Next generation of Flash for storage. PCIe controller up to 12, or I'm sorry, 1.2 gigabyte per second reads. Boy, 12 would be insane. Up to 1.0 gigabyte uh, speed, or per second writes. Uh, 1.0 gigabyte per second writes. Sorry, it's a lot of stuff going around in my head. Up to 1 terabyte capacity and user accessible. And when he's saying user accessible, you know, he's talking about upgrading, and that's that's smart. I was glad they went that route. Thunderbolt 2 is supported, uh, 20 gigabyte uh, per second throughput, channel bonding, up to six devices per port, backward compatible. If you want to upgrade your Mac Pro, you can. He's saying it's user accessible for some of these components, uh, but for expandability, it's all about Thunderbolt 2. Uh, and, and granted, they do also have USB 3 ports, and I believe Firewire 800 as well. Wait, no, I don't see fire. I don't see FireWire, but they do have the Thunderbolt to FireWire adapter, two Ethernet ports, just like the current MacBook Pro. No Toslink for audio either. Uh, it's, I'm not seeing a connector there. Uh, next generation video, you can power up to three 4K displays, single and dual displays, automatically configured. HDMI 1.4 supports 4K TVs. So the Mac Pro, uh, if you want to have a 4K display running, uh, you know, on Mac OS 10, uh, this would be the way to do it. A Mac Pro. Uh, looks like they've got, yeah, audio output, USB 3, Bluetooth 4 inside, supporting 802.11ac, a motion sensor as well in the Mac Pro, HDMI port, and I think that was a 1.4. And by the way, four USB 3 ports, uh, six Thunderbolt 2 ports, bleh, six Thunderbolt 2 ports, and they support 4K, up to three displays of 4K. So I, I'll have to replace these two which are running dual link DVI, and they're ripe for an upgrade. But I've been waiting for Apple to upgrade their Thunderbolt displays. So hopefully they will to 4K, which could be pricey, but that's the value of having sponsors. Hmm, new Mac Pro with 4K displays? That would be beautiful. Please, Apple, make another make another uh, update today. Uh, uh, a new version of... Final Cut Pro 10, that's awesome, because I use Final Cut Pro 10 or Final Cut Pro X to uh, edit my videos. Every video you see edited on our channel. Wow, okay, so hopefully we'll see that software update today as well, I hope. Um, and of course, having a 4K display, boy, it's going to make my 1080p video look crappy. Or the 720p video, like I'm uh, broadcasting now out of this DV cam. Not that it looks bad. You do trust me. You do not want to see me in 4K. That it's, I'm not that. Uh, I'm not that beautiful. I'm not. So uh, apparently, it can. The Mac Pro is faster. Yes, duh. But uh, in comparison, uh, would just speed up processing, and that to me is everything. It's about you know getting things processed and done. Sometimes I have to wait for things to process, and that's when it's uh, you know. That, that bottleneck that you want to move past. And when it comes to video editing, the faster hardware you have, the better. Whoa, okay. 
Mac Pro starting at two nine nine nine. That's just shy of three thousand bucks. That's with a three point seven gigahertz quad core Xeon, twelve gigs of RAM, dual Fire Pro three hundreds, twelve two gigabytes of VRAM each, two hundred fifty six gig SSD. Uh, that is the baseline. That's a pretty good baseline, of course. I configured my current Mac Pro a little higher than that because I was future proofing it, but it lasted me five years. I think I did pretty well. So if I can configure a new Mac Pro to last me five years, that's not bad. I gotta gotta think about who I can find. Well, if you know a sponsor, uh, I'd be entertaining offers at this point because I am ready to upgrade. Oh, available before the end of the year, maybe December, because that's before the end of the year. Uses 70% less energy than the previous Mac Pro. Awesome, because this thing's a little loud, my current Mac Pro, and I guess I'd give it away or sell it or do something with it. I don't know. Uh, great power consumption. Uh, fantastic power consumption in terms of uh, idle consumption. Uh, again, compared to the previous Mac Pro. Uh, so that's a surprise. Uh, th the price seems really reasonable for that type of computer. But again, you know, um, it's it's a Mac, and the the hardware inside is designed to run specifically with OS 10. You could run Windows on it if you want. Uh, you could run Linux on it if you wanted. Uh, but uh, it's really all about the uh, it's about the Mac and Mac OS 10 in the Mac. It's not bad, and it's designed pretty well. And power wise, wow, the acoustic level idle is less than 15 decibels. Wow. That's that's better than the current Mac Pro, which is closer to 30. That would have it, which is nice because you know that's that it. I do hear the Mac Pro when it when it's when it's on. I'd rather not. Rather, who wants to hear their computer like it's going to take off? Apple consulted Darth Vader for the Mac Pro says Turkish Turkish Chubs on uh, YouTube. There, uh, <coughs> I don't know about that. <coughs> I like the color though; it's black. It would match my decor. I've got Darth Vader all over the place. Uh, now they're playing a video, so, H honey, and she still hasn't texted back, getting a little parched. What do you say? Should I, uh, should I leave, I'll, I'll leave it up to you guys. Should, time to remortgage. Do I have to refinance to get a new Mac Pro? That's great. Uh, I'm not going to disappear for more than just a second. One second. See, I told you, I'm back. Uh, there we go. This is my new Mac Pro Celebration hat, helmet, Mickey Mouse ears, Darth Vader. I am ready for the Mac Pro. <laughs> They're playing a video right now talking about the engineering uh, and design that went into uh, the new Mac Pro. So you're not really missing anything. I mean, I'm assuming that if you've tuned in this long, uh, thank you, by the way, for paying attention as, as long as you have uh, for this lengthy video. If you're watching this after... We've actually broadcast it after it's live. Uh, wow. Shows just how dedicated you are to this channel. Uh, I really appreciate the support of my geek lifestyle because we are geeks. And if you don't get why this is geeky, this here, can, can you even see it? Yeah, are you guys catching it? Are you, are you, is, that, is that geeky enough for you? A, a, a nerd wearing a Darth Vader Mickey Mouse helmet that one of the subscribers sent in. Actually, two of them did the other day. Uh, and, and he's wearing a flash hoodie, which by the way, I'm just going to up the geek level here. That's how you know it's the flash. <laughs> Back to this helmet while we wait for them, uh, to tell everybody everything that went into the new Mac pro. Uh, apparently this was also assembled in the USA. So made in the USA. Just like me, baby. Okay, back to the live video stream. Everyone's applauding. Well, someone said Darth Vader. I had to put the helmet on. Well, I didn't have to, but... Why am I... They can't hear me applaud. No one from Apple's ever going to watch this video. That's okay. So in terms of Mac hardware, that's it for announcements today. I'd say a pretty good range of announcements. Very much looking forward to seeing perf... Uh, in, in benchmarks uh, from the new Mac Pros, especially those that are specced out to the gills. Eddie Q on stage, I'm expecting now to hear a bit about software. Yes, the iLife update, new iMovie, iPhoto, GarageBand for iOS and the Mac going free according to Scuttlebutt and also getting new updated icons. But I wonder if they're going to be getting 
Mac updates as well. I don't use iMovie uh, at, uh, really at all anymore other than streaming in live uh, from the, the camera and recording. Oh, yes. So they look like they are new versions, or there are new versions for the Mac and iOS 7. They're all 64-bit. Awesome. And integrated with iCloud. No surprises there. Uh, if you're, I, But again, I don't use iPhoto, iMovie, or GarageBand. Maybe I'm the only one. Some people love them. I'm not, I'm not a fan. Maybe the new version will win me over. I keep saying that. Maybe the new version, maybe the new version. But, man, I, you know, I'm a stickler when it comes to, you know, good software experiences. iPhoto's got a new look, which is great because I didn't like the old look. On the, uh, I don't know. He's talking specifically about iOS, not necessarily OS X. They're talking about photo book creation on the iPad, which is new. Uh, previously, it had only been available on the desktop or uh, OS X. Uh, looks the same on the Mac as it does on iOS, or uh, for the most part, which is good. Um, you know, and I, I think that uh, that's really about Apple optimizing each user experience for the modality of the, the computer. So if it's a touch computer like an iPad, uh, it would the interface would be optimized for touch versus OS X, which is more optimized for a keyboard and a mouse. New, new iMovie completely redesigned for iOS, focused on editing and sharing. My dad probably will not like that. He uses iMovie to edit all of his vlogs. You guys watch my dad's vlogs on YouTube? Even my brother Ben is now vlogging on YouTube. We've got most of my family now, uh, now, now posting videos to YouTube. It's a, a Perillo life, a Perillo family, this wide Perillo family. Uh, new design for Max as well, focused on browsing and sharing. Awesome. Uh, iPhoto, uh, yeah, we'll see if I can get into this new version. They're bringing new desktop class effects to iOS. Fantastic. Uh, someone saying, I hate Apple for selling old hardware for so much money. Scammers. No, not really. Um, you know, it's, it's not so much the hardware. You got to think about the integration too and the design. It, it's all a part of that experience, man. And if you think that's a scam, you're welcome not to spend your money. Go for it. Don't spend your money with them. Sometimes it's not just about the raw hardware. It's everything that you would get. Um, there's a new feature for iMovie called iMovie Theater. So it's kind of like a, an Apple TV type of navigation for all the movies, trailers, etc. cetera. Uh, puts them all into one place, shared all over iCloud. Fantastic. Uh, new interface for GarageBand as well. Fun to play around with, but I'm not a, a music engineer. What do I use to manage my photos? I use nothing, honestly. Uh, Instagram, I, I don't organize my photos at this point. I throw it all to the cloud, Flickr. Facebook, Google+, Plus, um, Instagram. I know, I, I could probably do things better. and Maybe that'll change over time, but it's just easier to organize that way. If I really want to save a photo, I'll save it to iCloud because it's easy and I can get to it pr from any iOS device at least at this point in time. Um, at some point, I, I've got most of my photos organized locally. Uh, I've got, I think, most of them backed up to the cloud somewhere or another. I don't know. I'm not really... I don't know. I, do, I don't take uh, much time organized beyond folders like folder drag drop done done uh i don't really worry about um too much uh, uh beyond that some people really get meticulous when it comes to organizing i don't but um i, I guess i'm not a photo collector fo uh, photo person as much as other people might be uh, so now they're going to be demonstrating um garage band Uh, give me a second. Ah. So yeah, they're de right now again. They're demonstrating um, GarageBand, which I really can't tune into at this point for you, sadly. <laughs> it, I know you guys are watching uh, the uh, 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 the stream, or you have to be watching Apple Stream at the same time as you're watching mine, which I appreciate. Chris, I can't watch the keynote. I don't know what to tell you, Rap Crap Server. I, I can't help that. I don't control the internet. I know many people think I do. I'm, I'm, they think I have way more power than I actually do. I have for power. Nothing. Uh, but I do believe, and this is again from Scuttlebutt, and they ha I don't know, did they talk about pricing? I may have missed it, but I, I thought I had heard at one point that all these apps would be free, or they would go free. 
which again, I think would be an extreme value for people who are using iOS or a Mac for the first time. And I know you've been able to get iLife for the Mac for free, or it comes with uh, OS 10 when you buy a new Mac. Uh, but I wonder if everybody else will be able to update to it. But they made Mavericks free, so maybe iLife will go free and iWork will go free as well. Again, this is a huge, potentially a huge win for Apple uh, in stark contrast to uh, Microsoft, which is still charging for a lot of this type of software. And of course, they put a lot of value into Windows 8.1, um, but uh, this would put it that much you know, more over the edge. And really, what we've been talking about uh, have been the smaller bits of announcements to this point. Apple hardware and, and some of its uh, more notable software. Haven't even gotten to the alleged iPad announcements yet. Hang on, I'm chapped. Whew. <clears throat> maybe one of these days uh, I'll, I'll get into playing with iLife a little more, but I, I think I may be a little beyond that for my particular needs. Ugh, I'm so tired. Apple has not ruined, you moron. Sorry, I, I don't mean to name call, but come on, really? Some people don't have much of a life. I mean, if all you have to do is hate, do it somewhere else. If you don't want it, go away. Just bye. I don't want you here. The rest of us don't want you here. Take your negativity and stick it where the sun don't shine. I'm having fun. Oh, <clears throat> there we go. Yeah. Uh, so the software is free with a purchase of any new Mac or iOS device. So I'd expect that everything else is going to cost money. Updates all available today. Uh, we'll see how quickly. I don't know if it's going to be immediate. Hang on. Let me check. Updates today now? No. A new version of Serene. That's it. Hang on. Yeah, no, that's that's pretty much it. Now onto iWork. New icons all around, and no surprise. Uh, they pretty much updated everything to fall in line with the ethos of iOS 7. Uh, so we will see uh, how well they work on these various platforms. Sorry, I, I just updated this app. I, it's like, you can't. I don't know if you can perceive that, but it's like a 3D pixie. It's an app called Scene. Isn't that neat? They just updated it, I guess. Uh, spelled S-E-E-N-E. -E -E. It's fun. <clears throat> Brand new UI. Easier to do things while being powerful. Full compatibility across iOS, Mac, and the web. Now we're talking about iWork. Completely rewritten for the Mac. Completely. I mean, I didn't mind the user interface <clears throat> of iWork on the Mac, but I, it, it need, needed to be updated. Uh, new context-sensitive format panel on the Mac. Okay. Uh, haven't seen. Let's see here. What's the UI look like here? Give me, give me a UI look. Um, it's clean. They definitely optimized for full screen, which I never work in full screen, other than on an iPad or, or an iPhone. <clears throat> uh, yeah, it doesn't. I guess it, it does look different. Um, but it shouldn't be any more difficult to use. In fact, it may be easier for a lot of people to use. Uh, pages, keynote, and numbers, if you use that as your office editing suite. Um, they're kind of minimizing the amount of controls that you might see, which just keeps you focused on creating the content uh, in relation to iWork. Uh, numbers has also been redone, looks like, with a completely new UI, live updating charts. So if you're a spreadsheet wonk like my dad, it's very visual. I mean, if you're looking just for ugly spreadsheets, this is not going to work for you because it's all about beauty with data in Apple. Uh, and I think they uh, they seem to have done a good job on the surface from what I've seen. <clears throat> I don't know, you know how well these uh, products integrate back and forth between desktop, iOS, and the web. Uh, but now they're showcasing Keynote. I don't use Keynote either. I use um, the... Uh, Haiku Deck is what I use, and I featured it in this channel a few times, um, actually. And many people have asked, you know, what I use. Uh, I don't use Keynote or PowerPoint. PowerPoint. Uh, Haiku Deck, free for the iPad. Um, but, you know, Keynote seems to work uh, seems well uh, on the surface. Um, 
you know, if you're looking for something that is a bit more granular than what Haiku Deck might be able to provide for you, uh, Keynote, I think, does stomp PowerPoint, even with compatibility. Uh, it is fantastic for design, and when it comes to a presentation, you want your presentation to look good, you know what I'm saying? Um, hang on, I wonder if, should I, well, I'm not going to show you right now. You guys can mess around with Haiku Deck at, at some point. It's free, as I said, uh, for the iPad. So now they're going to be giving a, a demo of iWork. Uh, so there's a full story for you, okay? Apple now has a, f a full Office Productivity Suite, or full enough Office Productivity. Uh, we have for iOS, for their mobile platforms, their phone, uh, for their uh, tablet computers, for their laptops or notebooks, their desktops, uh, as well as the web. So they're really, you know, they're falling in line with uh, what Microsoft's been doing, what Google's been doing. Although Google doesn't really have a desktop component. It's all about the web with Google and, of course, apps optimized for uh, mobile platforms. Um, that's very, very, uh, it's very curious to see uh, the way that Apple is approaching this. I don't know if um, I am, again, necessarily that person uh, who would want to use uh, this software, uh, because I don't do a lot of word processing, don't do a lot of presentations, uh, and really don't do a lot of spreadsheets. And most of my needs are met with uh, Google Docs. But in terms of fit and finish, I work easily, easily number one in terms of designing any of these office uh, documents, really. Uh, it kicks the crap out of Microsoft. Maybe not in terms of feature set, but what features do you need most? in any of these Office products. Just think about that. And I would say 99% of the time, what I need is cut, copy, and paste. Beyond that, I just want it to work. I just want it to be easy. I want to drag, drop, make it clean. Oh, did you guys see the video of, of a guy who recreated the iOS 7 iPhone experience in Microsoft Word? You got to look up this video. I don't know what if that's what it may be titled, but it's amazing to watch this guy use Microsoft Word uh, I think on Windows, to, to show you how to make iOS 7 or really make it look uh, like iOS 7. Uh, you can, you got to see the video. I'm not describing it half as well. You guys have probably seen it. You'll, and for those of you not paying attention, you'll probably send me the link to that later. I already know what it is. I've seen it. Thank you. And I'm now I'm telling everybody about it. Ah, they're adding collaboration to iWork for iCloud. It's about time. Looks a hell of a lot cleaner uh, than uh, uh, a Google Docs does. Not sure how fast it works. Google Docs is, is, for the most part, number one with speed in my book. Uh, but at least they've added, for parity's sake, uh, collaboration uh, within iWork, at least for, uh, for iCloud. <clears throat> Checking everything here. We're still good. How much longer for this? Well, I'm guessing we've now gone an hour, and we haven't even touched the iPads. We've probably going to be, we're probably going to be going another hour after this. Whew. Okay. I'm not breaking a sweat, but wow. Okay. They're demonstrating the collaborative features of uh, iWork for iCloud, which for all intents and purposes, uh, interoperate seamlessly with iOS and the desktop versions of the same products. Uh, pretty quick changes uh, between the two browsers that they're, uh, they're demonstrating. One person's on one br uh, browser using it, and the other one's collaborating on another browser. <clears throat> yeah, it, uh, you know, Eddie Q uh, has pretty much uh, stepped in uh, and done his best to clean up some of the messes that Apple's made in relation to services, including Siri, Maps, iCloud, certainly iWork in iCloud, and making sure it works for consumers. Um, it, it's gotten better over time. I can't say that it's, it's necessarily uh, uh, perfect. Uh, it looks pretty clean. It almost looks like you're running a desktop app within the web browser. And I used Google Chrome to use iWork, the beta, and it worked just fine. I didn't see any uh, performance differences between using Safari and Chrome in that. Uh, that was before Mavericks, though, so that may have uh, taken a step backwards. Yeah, Google Chrome really needs to <clears throat> step up its game. I keep saying that every year, too. <clears throat> uh, so, free with the purchase of any new Mac or iOS device. Very nice. Uh, they're, and so I guess I already have... I don't have a new Mac, unfortunately, so then I have to wait. I've got the old versions, so I've got to pay for them. They updated the icons. Any new... So wait a minute. If I buy 
If I buy a new iPad, I would get the iWork suite, but I already purchased it unless it costs me money again and they're making it new. Well, there are new versions, but I mean, you know, like reinitiating the pricing. <clears throat> and it, so it remains to be seen about what would happen with the desktop. Uh, so they're all free with Mac and iOS. So again, they're, they're fudging the details. They're not saying free entirely. So there's a big question mark. I wouldn't expect the desktop apps to cost too much more than they've cost before, but they seem to be slashing prices across the board. Or you might as well just wait till you get a new Mac and then you get the, the software and then you can install the new software on any devices. Apple's always been very liber liberal with licensing of their OSs, or at least in recent years, as well as uh, their applications, iWork and iLife. You could you know, buy a work uh, license key and then install iWork or iLife, well, across a variety of devices, or a family uh, license pack. They seem to have eliminated a lot of that uh, confusion, too. So now the, 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 the focus they're, they're making on stage right now is under apps. Apps. Uh, so next up, here we go, the big set of announcements I think many of you were expecting. iPad. Uh, quote, unquote, we launched iPad 3 and one and a half years, or no, we launched iPad three and a half years ago with a very clear goal. Our most advanced technology and a revolutionary and magical device. It was pretty magical when it came out. You gotta admit. Because we'd never really seen anything like it. We saw things that were almost kind of wanting to be like it, but and now we see things like it, but back then we didn't. It really was different. Now it's it's becoming run of the mill, the you know the idea of a tablet computer. Um, so now they're trying to, you know, lambast netbooks. Now this is interesting. They've mentioned netbooks twice. Uh, are we going to see? This is a guess. Are we going to see? If they're talking about Office and apps. Uh, you know, Office productivity. You need a keyboard. You really do. Other than an on-screen keyboard, will we see a keyboard cover from Apple today? They said, we still got a lot to cover in the invites that went out for this event. We still have a lot to cover. Think about that. Um, you know, I, I, that would make it even more of a killer for people who would be guessing or wondering or, or deciding between a Windows PC so they can have a keyboard and an office or an iPad. What's missing? Well, Office, well, now you've got that kind of solved, and especially if it's free with the iOS device. Uh, office software that they would use, uh, but the keyboard, that's the big question mark. Even though, yes, you can use, I love the Apple wireless keyboard, Bluetooth, best keyboard ever invented. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Especially when you work across Macs because it's the same lay layout. Muscle memory works perfectly. 170 million iPads sold to date. That's a cumulative sales. Uh, that's pretty astounding. In terms of tablet usage share, iPad commands 81% of the market with the rest of the market going to, well, the others, 19%. Uh, that's, a, that's pretty fantastic. Uh, you know, and, and that's really a testament to it as a platform for hardware, for software, uh, and now potentially even for services and optimization on that front. Uh, I can't say that I'm all that thrilled with iOS 7 on an iPad. I, I've seen a little lag in current-gen devices, uh, stutter. Kind of disappointing. Different type of stutter on the iPad than I've seen on Android devices, but stutter nonetheless. Uh, rated number one in customer satisfaction, according to Apple, likely according to a survey or, or uh, you know information. Uh, people love it. They do. They love their iPads. I, I don't know if I do love my iPad right now with iOS 7. Give me some performance updates, please. Please. Performance updates. Tell me. Tell me, I'm going to get some performance updates today, or at some point in the near future. 475,000 iPad-optimized apps. Not just apps. iPad-optimized. Uh, custom designed for the iPad screen, the iPad resolution. That's pretty fantastic. It, it really is. That's a lot. And I just think back just a, a few years ago. The only software was to go to a store and buy it off the shelf. You know, and we, there, I don't even think there was anything near access to that. You could, you'd be lucky to get access to 500 different applications if you walked into an average store that was selling software. So that's insane. 
Uh, but I go back to saying it's not just about quantity, it's about quality, too. Oh. Tim just said the same thing. We are of like mind. Oh, nice. Patrick Moorhead got quoted. I think it's an understatement to say that the iPad has been an overwhelming success, the biggest technology shift of our generation from tech pinions. That's awesome. He's an industry veteran. He used to work for AMD. Actually, I think we did a video with Patrick in this channel a long time ago. iPad is, it's been a game changer. It really has. And it is absolutely as much a computer as any other computer we've used. I would say the iPad is more of a personal computer than my first PC. Certainly the iPhone is more of a, a PC than my first PC in terms of personal and availability uh, for software. Uh, now they're playing a video. Hang on just a second. I'm going to call my wife Diana as they're playing this video back here because I'm kind of thirsty and I do not want to leave you hanging. We're going to put it on speaker. They're playing, they're just saying how great the iPad is right now. You're not missing anything. Even if you're watching the live stream, you're probably not paying much attention to this. That stream, hopefully you're paying attention to this. Come on, baby. Pick up. Pick up. Pick up. Pick up. Did she bring her phone? Did her phone die? She's got to have her phone on her. Ooh, maybe she has her iPad on her and I can FaceTime her. Uh, she's not answering. Okay. So let's go to FaceTime. I'm going to FaceTime Diana. I'm thirsty. I don't want to. I can't just. I can't squeeze, you know, water from thin air. That's what you look like right now. You, you'll FaceTime Diana. I'm not tired. I'm thirsty. Actually, no, I'm tired too. Maybe she'll hear this. I'm gonna have to yell. Okay, I'll give you 10 seconds to uh, adjust your microphone. I'm going to yell as they're still playing this video. Five, four, three. Oh, yes, I need some water, honey. I really need some water. Th thank please and thank you. I didn't have to yell. She heard me. I think she, she heard the FaceTime thing going off. Uh, and they're still playing a video right now, by the way. I had four shots of espresso this morning, and that kind of dries you out over time. <clears throat> I'm hearing cheering in the background, which may just be uh, part of the video itself. Go get a drink while the video's playing. Well, I'm not just going to leave the stream here. If I left it here, then everybody would come and, where's Chris? Where'd he go? 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 A lot of, a lot, I like how a lot of people are repeating the announcements that were already made that we already know. This is, it's, it's, it's fun. I, I'm glad we're all excited for this. Um, I'm checking them. I want to see if any of the software has been updated yet. I, I love software updates. Always have, always will. I'm a software junkie though. Need my fix. Phil's coming back to introduce the next generation of iPad. Here we go. Uh, Scuttlebutt suggests that the, uh, the format of the iPad mini is going to become the format uh, in terms of the hardware design of, uh, the regular iPad. And by the way, the live blog that I'm following is The Verge, like the best live uh, blog to follow anywhere. Better than mine, that's for sure. Because <clears throat> mine's a live vlog, a video. When is Apple getting factory unlocked iPhone 5S? I don't know. Gold is best. Is gold. Uh, so they're showing the differences now between the various iPads over the years from OS, you know, all the way uh, to really the, the design of the iPad, which hasn't changed all that much. Today, we think we have the biggest step yet in delivering the vision. I don't know what that means, really, uh, other than changing the design. But, you know, to me, I, I've never really wanted to upgrade the iPad because of design. I, I would primarily upgrade an iPad because of speed. That's, that's what I'd be focusing on and thinking about. Uh, so now, thinner, 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 lighter, more powerful than ever before. It looks like an iPad mini. Looks uh, like from the, the shot that I'm seeing here. Look at the video that they're streaming in too. Looks exactly like an iPad mini. But, but potentially, I'd assume bigger. So thinner bezel on the side. 
Of course, they have the OS tweak, which iPad Air? iPad Air. Okay. That's what they're calling it? iPad Air. Okay. iPad Air. I guess it makes sense because they have iPad Mini and the iPad Air. Hopefully they're not going to confuse people with the Air or the Mini because they would sound to be about the same. All right, imagine. 9.7 inch retina display. Bezel looks to be on the side, seems to be a little thicker. Uh, smaller than the current iPad gen. See, there we go. There's the bezel on the new one. Or There's the old one, the old bezel. There, you okay, baby? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I brought you a bonbon. Oh, a bonbon. It's a, it's a Spanish marshmallow, a, a Mexican marshmallow. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll have that in a second. Uh, so the new version is thinner, 0.7 millimeters thinner, 20% thinner than the previous gen iPad. Ugh. Thank you to both Diana and Apple for delivering awesome things that I want. Shut up and take my money. I upgrade the iPad every year, if only to give you guys my perspective, I do the same thing with the Nexus devices. Uh, 1.4 pounds uh, for the previous gen iPad, the one that we've currently been using. Using One pound, just one pound. The new iPad Air, one pound. Uh, that's a pretty dramatic difference. Now, is it going to be fast? It said faster, thinner, better? I'd imagine. It's lighter. A pound, one pound, more powerful, smaller, but the same resolution, same screen size, the actual screen size, bezel will be smaller. That's pretty amazing. That's a pretty big upgrade. I mean, if you think about it, where could they go? Smaller, faster. What about battery life? Is battery life going to be better? Is it going to be the same? Uh, we'd expect that it's going to be faster inside as well. Inside is A7 in the iPad Air. So it's the same chip as what's in the iPhone S, in the iPad Air. <laughs> Gizmodo quotes, forget the specs, it blows everything away. It does, it's, it's fast. Unfortunately, they have not yet optimized iOS 7 for the hardware. I, I honestly think the hardware is currently being crippled by iOS 7, I'll say it. This will never get me quoted in an Apple keynote, but uh, it's allegedly two times faster, and, and I've seen it in places, but iOS 7 needs uh, needs optimized big time, and that's the one thing that I'm hoping to hear in terms of tweaks that Apple's going to roll out today, but I don't know if they're going to say anything about it. Okay, this is weird. I wasn't sweating up until the point when I took a few sips of water, and now all of a sudden I'm like waterfalls here. Uh... 2x increase in rendering for 3D stuff on the A7. And again, this is the iPad Air. Not to be confused with the iPad Mini. Uh, A7. Oh, faster Wi-Fi. Oh, MIMO technology, the first iOS device. Multiple antennas in the iPad Air. Uh, so up to twice as fast, 802.11n performance. But they didn't say anything about uh, AC. Uh, they expanded LTE support. Fantastic, especially if you use LTE. I, at this point, don't. I ended up getting the Wi-Fi iPad this last time because I, I just wouldn't use the LTE service. I, I may change that tune here, though, with T-Mobile uh, in the, the coming weeks. New FaceTime HD camera, 1080p HD video, improved backside illumination, dual microphones on the iPad, uh, five megapixel eyesight camera, uh, so I'd, I'd imagine slight improvements there. 10-hour um, battery life, so it gets smaller, lighter, faster. Battery life's the same. Comes in silver and white. And space gray and black. Uh, and, of course, environmentally friendly as well. Uh, the iPad Air will replace the, iP uh, the full-size iPad starting at $499. <laughs> That's for a 16 gig Wi-Fi config. 
They're still selling the iPad 2, however, for $399. Strange they'd still be selling that. Why? So they want the full-size iPad. So really, what, what the differences between the two, I mean, I guess it's an A7 sh chip. They probably went with A7 over A7X because of batteries, or battery life. Launches November 1st. Um, so it's, yeah, it's a surprise they're still selling the iPad too, if only because of the lightning connector, instead of going, uh, I mean, because it's the uh, the classic 30-pin uh, connector, the iPad 2. It's classic. Um, well, this is the new iPad. It's called an iPad Air, not the new iPad, an iPad Air. Uh, it is going to be faster, lighter. I don't know about performance though. I mean, they say raw performance will be good, but have not yet seen a lot of really good optimizations, specifically in relation to iOS 7 and, and uh, the newer hardware. But I uh, will reserve final judgment to when I get the new iPad, I'm sorry, the iPad Air, I will be getting it as I do every year, uh, upgrade to the new iPad, uh, whatever they call it. This is what, the fifth generation now? Wow, what, fifth, right? Am I, I think, I think I'm right. You know, the, uh, the difference between one and a half pounds and one pound is pretty palpable. Pretty palpable. I don't know if this is going to unseat the iPad mini, though. Uh, it'll be interesting to hold the iPad mini side by side, hold it up side by side uh, with the iPad um, uh, Air. I've got all these names flying around my head. New names, too. Um, but I'd imagine the iPad mini still has a place, if only because it is going to be a bit more portable than uh, the iPad Air. And hey, a pound, that's about as close to Air as a, a bigger uh, leading gadget can, uh, is concerned. So yeah, uh, I know my big question for that is uh, using the A7 over uh, the A7X could have to do with uh, heat, uh, battery life, uh, and, and I guess other optimizations, uh, but probably uh, focusing on those two. <clears throat> or I guess in, in terms of why they didn't go with an A7X, they didn't need, or they didn't feel they needed the extra boost, or it would have cost more manufacturing, you know, one of these issues that could have uh, kept it from going with an A7X, <laughs> kept Apple from going that route instead of going with the A7. Uh, you know, from what I see, uh, you know, on the on their video, uh, it seems to look exactly like an iPad mini, but larger. Not like an iPhone, but bigger. A, a, like a, a bigger iPad mini. That is what an iPad Air is. With a retina display uh, and faster, substantially. So we'll see if we see an update to the iPad Mini, although I don't know if we're going to see one today. We, we, we might, but if we see an update to the iPad Mini, I don't know if they're going Retina. We'll see. I guess today we'll find out. Hang on, just one moment. It's, uh, it's an iPad experience. New hardware, faster. There you go. I don't know what else to tell you uh, other than it's just designed, the hardware is designed radically different from earlier iPads, uh, and it's a leading device. It's the state-of-the-art hardware. Uh, of course, it is solid state in general, no moving parts. Uh, eh, we'll, we'll see how it works or how well it works in hand, and I don't know when uh, I'll be able to get my hands on one, assumedly when uh, the day they ship, uh, which will be soon, hopefully. <clears throat> All right, now on to the iPad Mini. Pretty nice. Now remember, with the new iPad, you get iMovie, iPhoto, Pages, Keynote, Numbers. Uh, it's an array of software for free that turns it into a, as far as you're concerned, a computer, which is what it is anyway. <clears throat> so iPad Mini, which is almost it's almost like an iPad Nano, <laughs> not an iPad Air. Ugh. All right. So, uh, I'd expect we're going to see some speed increases. Uh, the one, ah, the one re most requested feature they added to the iPad mini was a retina display, and that's what they've done. So, now, the iPad mini is going to be retina. So, it's not probably going to be very as fast. A6 processor? That's a guess? So, it's the same as the iPad the regular iPad, a screen resolution, 2048 by 1568, retina display, same as the larger iPad, or the now known as the iPad Air, 
Um, so it's, it's fantastic. It's sharp and it's in a smaller, uh, uh, form than the other iPad, which is cool. A7 in the mini as well. Okay. Wow. Um, that's cool. Up to four times faster on CPU compared to the previous gen iPad mini. 10 hour battery life on the mini. Okay, that, I would say they upgraded the Mini more than they did the uh, the iPad Air. Big time. Whoa. That was not expected. Now, what did the pricing be? Because it's smaller and it's, it's almost exactly the same. Smaller, though. Okay, so how much is it going to cost? More? The same amount? Yeah. 5 megapixel eyesight, uh, 1080p FaceTime camera, silver and black editions. Expanded LTE support, two times faster Wi-Fi. So it's, it's, they're pretty much like the same iPads. Starting in November, yeah. Okay, $399 with Wi-Fi, $529 with mobile data. So it's smaller, just as fast, just as sharp, basically the same type of hardware across the board, and just $100 cheaper. Wow. The original iPad mini, of course, is still going to be around for $299. And people love the iPad mini. Nothing wrong with the existing iPad mini. But wow. Pretty big differences. Really big differences. That's insane. Um, I'm really... Uh, I'm, I'm more shocked at the iPad mini. Uh, honestly. And I think that's going to become a lot of people's go-to iPad now. With Retina. With the speed. With all the hardware internals, the battery life, the screen size, it's more portable. The screen's not as big size-wise, but wow. Now, granted, you know, uh, all those apps are going to work with the, uh, 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 the, the new iPads as well. And that's the thing to keep in mind, especially when comparing it to other tablets in the, uh, in the, uh, uh, eco in the, um, sorry, in the industry. Yeah, sorry. Um, new smart covers, new colors for 39 bucks. Uh, you know, I've been using the smart cover on the iPad mini. I've been using the old, uh, smart cover, the leather one, the classic one I've had for ages for eons. Uh, I don't know if this one will be compatible with the newer iPad air. I guess we'll find out. There are also new iPad cases protecting the front and the back, which, you know, I wasn't really all that impressed with the uh, original iPad case. I didn't think Apple did a very good job with that. Uh, they're not saying anything about a keyboard, though. All right. Fair enough. Maybe maybe they're not going to do that. I, th I figured they would, though. Why wouldn't they? Oh, well. You can still use third-party keyboards uh, for productivity um, if you wanted carry that around or an iPad case, which I've used different ones in the past and they, they work fine. Uh, so Tim Cook is back on stage potentially to wrap up. We may be done with all the updates that we're going to see today. We've, we've heard everything that we would expect to hear in relation to hardware and software updates. Uh, pretty exciting. I don't know when we'll be able to pre-order the new iPads yet. However, uh, the uh, hope is uh, we'll be able to order and, and have it shipped uh, in November instead of the way they did it with the iPhone where they you ordered or could get it in store the same day. Um, that kind of sucked. I didn't like that because that was the, the only time I've ever waited in line for a phone and probably the last time I'm waiting in line for a phone. Uh, yeah, Tim's recapping everything iOS from iOS 7 to the iPhones to the Mac Pro to the MacBook Pros. Uh, I mean, it... it, it Series of bumps, a series of announcements, uh, you know, nothing, I wouldn't say really earth shattering, except for I'm probably most blown away with it. My, my biggest thing, and I, I can't wait to see the Mac uh, Pro uh, performance, but the Mac, uh, iPad mini, that, that, that update to the iPad mini, that is, that's pretty stellar. It, uh, like, I'm shocked, shocked, really. I mean, they, they made it, if you just think about this, and I, I, I can't understate this enough, it is pretty much like an iPad Air now. It's just smaller, same processor, uh, virtually same internals other than size-wise, and, and it's more portable. 
Wow. So the bigger value of having now the iPad Air is you want a larger screen, which is valuable. I mean, I like having large screens. Uh, but if you're looking for more portability and still a sharper screen, then the iPad Mini is going to suit you just fine. Uh, wow. Not a lot of other differenti differentiators differentiators between other than $100. And for that extra $100, you're really paying uh, for the, the screen size of the uh, uh, iPad Air <laughs> over the iPad Mini. But I'd imagine that the, the iPad Mini would cost more. Guess not. I think that's the sleeper hit is the new iPad Mini. Pretty happy with that. I think they're going to sell a ton of iPad Minis now. ton of them. Again, not to say there's anything wrong with the current range. I've got, we've got iPads and iPad minis flying around this house right now. It's crazy. Because what do you do with them, right? We can sell them. I guess we can sell them to recoup the costs. We probably should. Probably will. Hey, do you guys want to buy my iPad or iPad minis? Because I've got this extra one here and the, the one that I use too. Because they're great. They, they work great like as long as you use them, right? But if I sell them, I get money back that I can apply to the new iPads which uh, you can stay tuned for at least two new product reviews and unboxings. I will be getting the iPad Air and iPad Mini. Uh, still waiting to hear on a Mac Pro, however. Likely will not be picking up a new MacBook Pro, unfortunately. That, that makes me sad. Um, but they're hoping to have all these products available for holidays, uh, although the Mac Pro doesn't look like it may ship before uh, December. Uh, Tim Cook is pretty much wrapping up now. Uh, the next series of uh, things that you may hear throughout the, you know, making it throughout the web are the software updates, all seemingly available today, and most of which are going to be free updates. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. Thanks again for commenting, liking, subscribing, and sharing. Thank you for being a great part of this community. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, maybe they mirror mine. Uh, and as I said, stay tuned to this channel uh, for more geeky lifestyle stuff. I got to go right now, do other things, including uh, drink more water because I think I'm talking like this and talking out loud. <clears throat> Gets you kind of worn out and then you start to sweat. This is not flop sweat, by the way. I'm not pitting out that I can tell. So thanks again. We'll see you later.